as we are coming from John chapter 15. I'm only going to read verses 1 and 2 on today, verses 1 and 2. John chapter 15, verses 1 and 2. And it says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. I'm going to take for a subject today, subject matter today is... Don't let it die on the vine. All right. Don't let it die on the vine. All you right. may be seated in the presence yeah. of the Lord. We've been in a thing, living out loud. God has given me this at the first of the year. This wasn't something that was planned, but he had given me something that was Important to understand that as we go forward in the months to come, that we must be able to embrace what God is purposing for us to do. Many of us are wanting to be on display after God has finished a work. But we don't want to be on display while he's doing the work. We want everyone to believe that the best work that God is putting forth is the end result. When in fact, the work that God is doing is while it's happening. And we like to shine away while we're going through our own life circumstances. While we're going through our own dilemmas and our own chaos, we want to tuck ourselves away so that others can't really see us when we feel like we're at our worst. But I believe that when we're at our worst, God is at his best. Yes. It's easy for us to show God in the best way, in the best way we look, in the best way we conduct ourselves when everything is going right. But I believe that it is imperative that we live out loud yeah. on purpose. Amen. It's in this text that God has led me to this text and he said look I want to address something with all of you who believe that you are doing the best and you're living your best life now yeah. I know that that's a book but God said you're not living your best when I am not included in your life right. we have been talking about this allowing God to work in you not just through you not just let him work on you and not just let him work for you, but he desires to do a work that's in you. Amen. If it's done in you, it will come out of you. Uh -huh. If it's done on you, you won't put it in you. You won't keep it close. You won't harness it. You won't even have the results that you need in order to be who God has predestined for you to be. Yeah, I come to this text. As God is reminding all of us, he says that Jesus is the true vine. Yeah. He says, but I'm the vine dresser. I know exactly what it is that I want, what I desire of you. And you are out here advertising components of your life that I have not even endorsed. There's some things about you, some things in me. Though I may say you, I want to say this because God is constantly pulling back the covers on my life. I find each and every day there's a little residue of something of years past that I am discovering that is trickling into my current life. Those of us who have gone through something and are, are now going through something, we're finding that there are some things that we are struggling with simply because of what we've dealt with in our past. Uh, I'm, this, I'm this guy. If you know me, I don't like heights. I, I really don't. I'm, 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 I'm fearful of heights. I, if you take me above eight feet, I start to think of the worst. 
not the best. Right away, I start thinking of losing my footing and tripping and falling down to my own demise or my own de death or injury. Yes. I think of the worst and not the best. God has been showing me that you've allowed what has traumatized you in your childhood to filter over into your adulthood. Uh -huh. and there are things that you won't even embrace and go into simply because of your fear of heights. Uh -huh. Mine is fear of heights, but yours is something else. Maybe you you lack trust in people because someone took advantage of you. So you are not easily given to what people say that they're going to do in your life. You're the skeptic. You are always cynical. You always have something negative to say because people have always let you down. And as a result, we find that those who don't trust people also don't trust God. Because we treat God as if he's like a man. That he should lie, but we know he's not like us. He doesn't carry himself like us. He doesn't say things he doesn't intend to carry out. Yeah. We know that he speaks it and it materializes. Yeah. The thing about us is we say things that we intend to do. And moments from now, we will change what we purposed. Yeah. Like, uh, case in point, there are people who have intended on last night when they laid down that they were going to get up and go to church this morning. They woke up and opened the garage and still saw that all the ice wasn't melted and took it as an opportunity to go back inside and say, well, it's not melted. I don't want to slip and fall. But by 12 o'clock today, they will be at the movies. Or by 12 o'clock, we will find ourselves at a restaurant Finding a way to do what we desire, but not doing what God intends to do in us. Yeah. I'm in this place. I'm in this place. God said, I purpose to do something in you. And many of us in, in the body of Christ, we all believe that we're, we're that ripened fruit. We're the ones that we're just perfect. But the Bible says that even in this, we even if you believe that you are a perfect fruit, you are a perfect grape, you are perfect on the vine. God says that even if you're producing, I'm going to prune you so you can produce more. I'm going to cut on you. I'm going to shed some things from you so that you can produce more. And if you're not producing anything, then what I'm going to do is make sure that I cut you away from the vine. Those of us in church who are desiring to do as we purpose to do. And at the same time, believing God is having his way. We're finding out that God is saying it's time for you now to start eating, to shed some of those things that displeases me. It's time for you to start changing the way you process and start to do as I purpose. If you don't, then I have to cut you away from my vine. There's a work that God is purposing to do in each and every one of us. And I have come to this place where I know that what I desire for him to do is not going to be easy. It's easier said than it is to do. God, have your way in my life. Let your will be done, not mine, but your will be done. That's easy to say, but it is hard and difficult to follow through on. When God is saying, I know what I created you for, and yet you still persist in resisting me. You are tugging in the opposite direction. I have put something in you that I know I must get the best out of you. And it is us who refuse to cooperate with God. We're saying now at this point, God, I know things are difficult. But God, I just want to, you know, I just want to, you know, I want to take a rest right now. I want to lay down right now. I want to give up right now. I just want to give me a break right now. And God is saying, no, I, I just need you to know that I am at work in you. I'm doing a work in you. It's in this, in this text that God says, many of us in the body of Christ, outside of the body of Christ, thank you, Lord. Because I've said this, that 
The church has made us all believe that if you are only in church, God is using you. But I must let you know that whether you are going along with God or resisting God, you're still a part of God's plan. God is not going to say, well, you're not saved, so I'm not going to use you. No, I'm going to use you, but you won't get the benefit. That's that one thing that we have to embrace is God is saying, I don't want to just use you as a conduit. I don't want to use things to go through you. I hear God keep saying, remind them that it's not the work that I'm doing through you. It's the work that I want to do in you. I want you to benefit. Fine. That the grapes that are on the vine, as Jesus is so eloquently laying out to his disciples and those who are within earshot. He says, I am the true vine. He says, and my father is the vine dresser. And my father determines exactly what the vine is going to produce. He says, and every branch that's in me. He didn't say every branch that's on me or every branch that's of me. He said, every branch that is in me. Even in this text, he is saying it is just not work through Jesus Christ, but it's the work through through me and in me. It's not just the work that I want to do that comes through me, but I want the work to be also in me. I want you to be in me. If you are in me, everything you do will have the results that God desires for us to have. Uh, That means that I get to benefit as well. He says that my father is the vine dresser and every branch in me that does not bear fruit. He takes away. He says in every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. I, I couldn't understand. And even now, still to a certain dilemma for me. As you would think that you get a certain place in your life, you get to a certain place and you believe that you can just coast. You're not gonna have too much problem. God, if I just do what you say, if I'm just obedient to you, then things will just be smooth sailing. But I've discovered y'all that the more I'm obedient to God, the more there's a hiccup in my life. There's There's more turbulence. It feels like things get a little rockier. Have you ever been on a plane? Now, I've been, I've flown quite a few times in my life, and I I can remember just a couple of times where I literally thought I was going to die. (laughs) As the plane would, would start to jump and rattle, and I, the first time it happened, I literally, I was grabbing the edges of the seat, And I was holding on as if the seat was going to save me. (laughs) But there was a there was a a signal that I paid attention to. Nobody had to tell me this. As I became a little bit more uneasy about the turbulence on the plane, there was something in me that said, watch the flight crew. sat there and I, my eyes went from the person next to me to the flight crew. And when I saw one of the flight attendants walking down the aisle, not in a rush, but walking down the aisle and moving along with the plane as it shook and making her way to her seat saying, everything is okay. Do you need some coffee? As soon as we get through this, when she said, as soon as we get through this, I realized at this point that this was only for a season. Many of us get tripped up when things start to happen, that we get frazzled when things happen. And what we do is we look at our circumstance and the turbulence in our circumstance. And we believe that it is to our demise and to our detriment that we're about to go down, that the marriage is over, the relationship is over, the career is over, when God is saying, do you want some coffee? <laughs> we, 
we respond to God as if God is not in control. We say, do I want some coffee? God, my life is in shambles. And it looks like it's over. He's like, do you need a pillow? And I'm like, God, everything is falling apart. People that I've relied on are leaving my life. And you're asking me if I need a glass of water. He said, I am God. And nothing happens without my permission. And if you will just trust me as opposed to trusting in the storm that you're in. Many of us just put our trust in the storm and not in God. I don't know why I went that way. God is saying we focus on what's happening as opposed to who's allowing it to happen. I couldn't understand, y'all, how I could go through a season in my life and everything be okay. And it seemed like overnight, it just seems like the bottom just falls out. Like they said, it is just like anything that can will go wrong. You lean against the wall and the wall falls down. You lean on a handrail and it seems like it comes up out the ground. You lean on a friend and the friend disappears. It seems as if nobody even cares what's going on except God. In this text, as I read this text, the Lord was showing me, he said, look, there are too many things that are, are hindering you from growing maturely in me. Many of us have stunted growth on the vine. We're on the vine, but we can't get any bigger. We can't get any more appealing or more beautiful. Seems as if in our own lives, what we're going through is stunning our own spiritual growth. And it's at this stage that we should be mature in our relationship with God where we find that we are still stunning. When God looks at the vine, he says, I'm growing you. But there are things that you are refusing to accept. What we do is we participate in our own growth to be stunted. We participate by, by not acknowledging that God knows exactly how we're going to grow and how we're going to grow in him. And what is our growth for? Is your growth only for you? Who determines if you've grown? Who determines? Who is it that's determined if you have matured? It's all of us who like to say, I'm a mature saint, I'm a mature believer, I'm a mature man or woman. But I believe that in this case, the only one who tells you if you're mature is God. Your circumstance is always going to give you an indicator. What you're going through is if you are really on course for becoming who God has called you to be. Don't let it die on the vine. Is this position that you and I take that God purposes to do something in you? And he's saying that I want to fully blossom you and grow you in a way that you have no idea that you have in you. I told you I said I was afraid of heights. When I was in the military, we went on an obstacle course. And there was this, this part of the obstacle course that we got to. When I saw it, I became so frantic. And this, this component is, you look up, it looks like a huge ladder. It reaches into the sky about 80 feet. And each, each step you take, the rung gets further apart. There's no net. There's no rope. But you have to navigate this apparatus by shimmying yourself up on the pole and getting to the next rung and then reaching up and grabbing the next one the best way you can. So the higher you go, the further apart they get. 
I don't like heights. As we're standing in line, as some who are more eager to get up there to prove to the drill instructor that they're not afraid, they take the front of the line and they go after it and they go up and they shimmy up and they, they go all the way up and over the other side and come back down. I'm in line. And every person that moves forward, I get out of line and get behind the person that's behind me. As we get closer, I, I'm starting to sweat. I'm starting to, you know, I'm starting to have chattering conversation with the person beh behind me, you know, trying to, oh man, I'm, I'm trying to see if in fact they're feeling the same way I'm feeling. And I find that every time I take a step back, I'm the only one who's nervous about going up there. And I found that as the line got shorter, I kept going to the person behind me until there was no one else. Now, I know y'all think that I did go up on that apparatus, but I prayed <laughs> and I was like, Lord, please, <laughs> please help me because I don't want to do it. Because all I saw, I saw myself falling. And it's at that point that I believe God heard me. I believe he heard me in that moment. And it was when it was my turn that I got close to that tall ladder. One person in front of me and I'm next. Everybody else is done. That the drill instructor looked at his watch and he says, oh, we got to go. In me, I shouted. I wasn't even saved then, but I shouted. But the Lord took me back to that moment. And he said, though you ran from that ladder, you won't run from this one. This one you must go up. And you must shimmy your way up. You must reach for the highest mark. And you must not look down, but you must keep looking up. I'm like, God, I know that you are there. But I also believe that if I don't hold on to you, then I'm going to lose what you've purposed and intended for me to have. You say, don't worry about what you're going to lose. Think about what you're going to gain. And many of us spend our lives fighting the things that we're going to lose. Not thinking of what we're to gain. Look at where you are now and you're looking at what you're going to lose. We've been conditioned to look at what we lose as opposed to what we gain. Yes, sir. God is saying, yeah, you, you got behind the person, but there's nobody in line but you. I'm waiting on you. Don't look at where, where you're going. Look at what's in front of you. For some of us, it is easy to look where you're going and think, oh yeah, I have a goal in mind. But God is constantly reminding me that you need to take each and every day as a rung on the ladder and not focus on the next one, but focus on the one that's in front of you. I stopped praying, God, you know, uh, help me tomorrow for my appointment because I realized in the last couple of years, I may not make it to tomorrow. But God, for the appointment that I have today, help me to appreciate what you have for me today. And if, in fact, what you have purposed in me, God, don't let what you have put in me die on the vine. There are a lot of us who won't accomplish what God has purposed simply because we're too stubborn to allow him to do the work in us. We're happy with him doing the work through us, but God, I don't like the work you're doing in me because I'm so used to you doing a work for me. God has become the one that we believe that he owes us everything. And if he doesn't come, that we'll go into the corner and start to cry and pout. And if he don't show up, I'm not doing anything. God is saying you are dying on the vine. This point are refusing to 
comply with me, to cooperate. And you think that your life is better when you don't participate. So God, I don't want to die on the vine. I don't want my gift to die on the vine. I don't want my calling to die on the vine. I don't want my destiny to die on the vine. And a lot of us are just like me where you see something in front of you and you don't want to approach it or attack it. You want to run from it. God is saying this is not the circumstance that you want to run from. You want to run to it. So when you run to it, you have a different approach. I'm going to say this. I didn't even get to where I'm going, God, but I thank you. Oftentimes, there are grapes on the vine, and they end up rotting on the vine. All the fruit that we see oftentimes don't even make it to the table. It don't make it to market because they end up rotting on the vine. And there are different circumstances that happen to make, to make fruit rot on the vine or especially grapes to rot on the, the vine. And one of the things I discovered as I read it, I said, this is crazy because it says that oftentimes what happens on the vine is there are insects that start to gravitate to the vine all because of the dead things that are still lingering on the vine. So insects are attracted to dead things that are on the vine, so they take refuge on the vine. When you look in your own life, you ask yourself, who are those influences and what are those influences around you that keep you from growing, that keep you from becoming who God has called you to be, those things that keep you from ripening? What are those things in your life that keep you from being the best that God has intended for you to become? And oftentimes, it's the influences of other people. It's what we believe they say or believe or think their influence over us. I'm, I'm clear that God has destined me for greatness and not in the greatness that I desire, but in the greatness that he's intended for my life. And I've looked, searched over the things that have happened, and I want to look back and say, well, because of these things, I am not, I'm not this. As I was graduating high school, I never thought that the one subject that I hated, I would use as an adult. Math was my nemesis. And I used that because I became afraid of something that was challenging to me. And here it is as an adult, I find that I have to face those things that have challenged me as a child. You ask yourself, it may not be something as simple as math. It may be something as simple as speaking up. It may be something as simple as opening your mouth and saying it, as opposed to waiting for somebody to tell you what to say. I'm, I'm right in that vein, I, I feel God right there. You're being led. I'm going to speak to it. You know, I know you're, you're, you're listening to me. And you're used to sitting back and being dictated to what's the best result for you, but you know God is telling you different. And as a result, you're dying on the vine because you're doing what you're told by a man and not by what God has said. You will look up in a few weeks and you will follow what someone has instructed you knowing what God has said and given you even in your dreams. And you will live to regret it because at this point in your life it is the most crucial. Because God is saying I don't want you to rot on the vine. Some of us have taken the position and I did this I said, I don't, I don't want no problems from nobody. I've lost some things by speaking up. I have done this in my 
in my life where I have suffered great loss because I have expressed myself in a way that it displeased those who were around me and I ended up losing. Mm -hmm. And as a result, as I got older, I started to become a little bit more reclusive. Let me keep my opinion to myself. Let me not say it. Let me just mind my business. I know I'm talking to somebody now. I hear you, God. But you're in this place now where God is saying, open your mouth. You don't have to take it. You don't have to take it. As a matter of fact, I'm telling you not to take it. Shut it down. Close it off. Stop this foolishness right now. Oh, that's God. That's God. Saying at this moment, you speak into your own life and stop waiting for others to speak into it for you. He says he's already told you what to do, but you're refusing to do it because you don't want to offend nobody. He said, would you rather die on the vine or offend somebody? Let me say this in closing. Somebody today. You're not struggling because you know what to do. You just don't like the results that it's going to produce when you do it. But God said, just trust me. I got you on this. 